So the next topic of discussion is um, these concepts of accuracy and precision. We've already started talking a little bit about what these things are, um, but we're just going to elaborate a little bit more. So I've used the term precision, um, but I haven't explained the difference between what we mean by accuracy and what we mean by precision. So let's talk about this. Accuracy, it is determined and defined by the number of significant digits within a measured quantity. Accuracy is a measure of the appropriateness, it's the best word to describe it, the appropriateness of the instrument used to make the measurement. If you recall, when we did that one measurement, we only got one significant figure. So let's revisit that again. So when we went up here, when we took a look at, at this result over here, we saw that this measurement here was really quite low quality because it was only a guess and we only had one significant figure generated from that. So as a result, we know that that is a poor quality measurement because the tool wasn't, wasn't appropriate. It wasn't an appropriate tool. So the number of sig figs generated from a measurement does tell you how appropriate the tool was. The more sig figs that are generated, the better it is, the better suited it is. So in that first case, one sig fig, that is the lowest you can possibly get the lowest quality. So it, it is a very inaccurate result because you can tell that, that there's no, no way that we could be sure that that was a seven, that seven was a total guess. So when we talk about accuracy, it has everything to do with the number of sig figs. So when we take a look at this measurement over here, when we take a look at this one here, we have 34.56 centimeters. So we know we have four significant figures. Let's indicate which one is the guess. We know that the guess is the six, and we know that the five represents what the smallest scale in the instrument was. So if this column here is the centimeter column, then that column must be millimeter. So that means that the instrument had millimeter markings on it. And then our guess over here would be to the tenth of a millimeter. Let's take a look at the next measurement here. So now when we look at the next measurement, that zero is just a placeholder. We have to remember that that's not part of the measurement. That's just a placeholder. It's necessary to represent 0.987. Without that zero there, um, we wouldn't have this number. So this is three sig figs again. So that is our guess and that represents the smallest scale. So when we look at this, this column here is our millimeters. So then this column here is a tenth. This column here is a hundredth. So the precision of the measurement, right? The, so the, the smallest scale on the instrument was a hundredth of a millimeter. And our guess is down to a thousandth of a millimeter, which is technically something called a micrometer. But we'll get into that when we talk about metric prefixes and so on and so, so forth. So let's take a look at this 500 kilometers. Well, those two zeros, those as far as we know, are just placeholders. So that five is just our guess. So now when we look at that, we know that it's one sig fig, poor tool that was selected, and let's consider where this column exists. So this column is missing, but it's still there, just there's no value in it. So when we take a look at this, this number here, um, let's find out what uh, the smallest scale must have been. Because if my guess is in the 500s, well, if that's kilometer, that's tens of kilometers, that's hundreds of kilometers. So that's the hundreds of kilometers um, uh, column. And this would be the thousands, thousands of kilometers. Well, thousands of kilometers is actually a megameter. Um, just like a kilobyte, a thousand kilobytes is a megabyte. Um, a thousand kilometers is a megameter. So this one is our least accurate this one is the most accurate that we have. Okay, so accuracy is fairly straightforward. It's just a question of um, looking at the number of sig figs in a measured quantity. Next, we're going to talk about precision. Now, with precision, there's two types of things that we need to consider. Um, there is the precision of the measurement, and then there's something called the precision of the instrument. So let's talk about the difference in those two. So the precision of the measurement is um, the location or the position of the guess. Now, what we're referring to when we talk about precision is something called the decimal depth. So that means um, how far this way, 
our guess is located. So the further our guess along the number line, um, the further our guess is to the right, the more precise we have, the deeper it goes into the decimals. So the decimal depth, what we mean by that is how far past the decimal or to the right is that value located. So here is the position of the two and the unit is meters. All right. So that means this here is our meter and this would be our decimeter and this column here would be the centimeter. So the precision of our measurement is to the centimeter. That is the precision of our measurement because our measurement includes the guess. But let's talk about the instrument. Now the precision of the measurement versus the precision of the instrument, those are actually two, they're related but slightly different. So the precision of the instrument is determined by the finest scale on the instrument itself. So for instance, if the ruler had millimeter markings, the precision of the instrument would be millimeter, but the precision of the measurement would be to the tenth of a millimeter. So when we look at this, our guess is this column here. And the precision of our instrument is always, always going to be the column immediately to the left of where the guess is. Whether there's a number there or not, that column represents the precision of the instrument, it's the one to the immediately to the left. So if this column here is the meters column, then that column there is the decimeter. So that means that the precision of the instrument, the precision of the instrument um, would be to the decimeter. Okay, so let's take a look at a few more examples here. So I have three examples. And what we're going to do here is we're going to determine the accuracy, precision of the measurement and precision of the instrument of each of these measured quantities. So again, as a reminder, we have to identify the position of the guess as well as the position of the precision of, of, of the instrument itself, the smallest scale. So the guess is always the last significant digit and the next door neighbor to the left is always the location of the smallest scale on the instrument. So in this case, I've color coded everything. So we have our guess here, which is a zero in this case. And we know that is significant because that is the weird rule because you normally would not have a zero trailing at the end there. So we can count all the sig figs. So that's significant, that's significant. So one, two, three, four, five. So we have a grand total of five sig figs. Next step is we have to identify the location or the decimal depth for the guess, which is associated with this, and the smallest scale, which is associated with that one. Precision of measurement versus precision of the instrument. So if this is the centimeter column, this would be the tenth of a centimeter, hundredth of a centimeter, thousandth of a centimeter, and ten thousandth of a centimeter. All right, so our precision of our measurement is to the ten thousandth of a centimeter. Now, ten thousandth of a centimeter is the equivalent to a thousand, um, a thousandth of a millimeter, which is the same as one micrometer. You may not be comfortable with these conversions yet, but we will get to that later on in the course. Now, we do the same thing with the precision of the instrument. The precision of the instrument, that is to the thousandth. So that is where that is located. It's in the thousandths column of a centimeter, which is a hundredth of a millimeter, which works out to tens of micrometers. Example number two. So let's take a look at this one. So with this value here, we uh, I've color coded again to the same convention where placeholders are in blue, guess is in red, and the location of the smallest scale is in green. So that zero is just a placeholder because there's no tilde over top. So the location of the um, precision of the measurement is there, and that would be the precision of the instrument. So since that's a placeholder, two sig figs. And since we are in meters, that column there is meters. So this column here would be tens of meters or a decameter. And this column over here, hundreds of meters or a hectometer. So the precision of the measurement is to the decameter and the precision of the instrument is to the hectometer. And the last example is the most complex one. And the reason why the last example is the most complex one is because we have this issue here. We are in scientific notation. So normally this is your ones column, but because we have a times 10 to the negative two, this column is now our 10 to the negative two column. 
And when we go towards the right, the numbers get smaller as the exponent. So numbers get um, tinier, so the exponents get more negative. So if this is 10 to the negative 2, this column is 10 to the negative 3, 10 to the negative 4, and then 10 to the negative 5. So we have four sig figs, 1, 2, 3, 4, our guess, precision of the instrument, and these two values here, zero sandwich, of course. So we have our four sig figs, and the precision of the measurement is the location of where the 8 is, which is in the 10 to the negative 5 meters. We're just going to leave it at that. We won't find the metric thing for that, but that's the location to the to the 10 to the negative 5 or 100,000th of a meter. And then the precision of the instrument is to the 10 to the negative 4 meters. So 10 to the negative 4 would be 10,000th of a meter. So um, 100,000th of a meter, 10,000th of a meter. And that's that.